What is happening all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for a look at the Eternals Omnibus and an advanced look at the Eternals Monster Size hardcover from Marvel Comics. Let's do this. And welcome back everybody. Before I get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of the Eternals monster size book and a copy of the Eternals Omnibus. Uh, the Eternals Omnibus already came out a couple of weeks ago, but the Eternals monster size book, that one comes out on January 6th. So let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about what the Eternals are and talk about the build of the Omnibus first and then we'll compare it to this monster size book. But I mean, as far as size comparisons, I don't think it gets better than this. Here you have an Omnibus on the left and here you have the monster size book on the right hand side. So uh, let's look at the spines and then the backs. And here's what both of those spines look like together and then the back of the books. Both of these retail for $125. So let's talk about the Omnibus first. So this is the standard edition version of the Omnibus. And on the left is the direct market cover. Uh, this standard edition is drawn by Alex Ross and shows a modernization of these characters. Now we've seen the back and the spines. Let's look at it under the dust jacket and it's just literally the Eternals, the complete saga, and there we have a picture of Icarus. Then the creators, Jack Kirby, Peter Gillis, Sal Buscema, and Walter Simonson. All right, so let's get this open and talk about the story. All right, so let's go ahead and get this opened. I got some grayish bookend pages. The Eternals. Here's what all it collects, the creators there. And there you have the Deviants, the Humans, and the Eternals. We'll talk a little bit about what the story is about because we have two books to look at. And we got to do a comparison too of the size of the internal artwork. But here are all the creators behind the Eternals, at least this omnibus here. The table of contents right here. A forward from Ralph Macchio. And this is really cool because Ralph Macchio had one of his letters printed in one of the early issues of the Eternals and talking about how unhappy he was with this concept and idea. So this concept and idea comes from the King, Jack the King Kirby. So this is the return of the King from DC Comics to Marvel Comics. He started out at Marvel Comics, uh, left Marvel Comics, went to DC, did the whole New Gods thing. Um, and unfortunately that didn't really work out. So a lot of his storylines didn't get uh, finished. Came back to Marvel, did Captain America, did the 2001 um, Space Odyssey adaptation, and he wasn't done. He decided to do and create something all on his own. So this is literally, not with Stan Lee, but this is all Jack Kirby writing and drawing The Eternals. Now this book retails for $125, like I mentioned earlier, and has 1126 pages. And this is literally all you need to know about the Eternals as far as the uh, basic premise is found in these pages right here. The Eternals are a race that were created, as we find out in issue two, by the Celestials. And this is where they make their first appearance. The Eternals make their first appearance in issue one, some of them, like Icarus. And then the Celestials make their first appearance in Marvel Comics, which is crazy because you, you always think that they've been a part of Marvel Comics since the beginning because they're a big part of the Cosmic Saga. Uh, they make their first appearance in the second issue. Like I mentioned, all of this by Jack Kirby. Uh, so the Celestials created and tampered with early... Uh, apes and they created three different species by tampering with these apes and that is the deviants the humans and the eternals the deviants went underground and are they look like this they look like those mole man creatures that you see uh hanging out with the mole man well i'm pretty sure i don't have to tell you who the humans are and the eternals are these almost eternal or immortal like beings hence the name that kind of left humanity and went to go live on their own. Uh, they went to live on Olympia. They went to live in Atlantis. And throughout the years, there was civil war between the Eternals, whether to take over the world or whether to leave humanity alone. And they've been at odds with each other. And here is Icarus with Margo and her dad. Both of these are human, and Icarus being the Eternal, just reminiscing about how he's helped out humanity throughout his time, including helping to build that ark for Noah. Uh, there's Ajax right there that they kind of awaken in the first issue and through this series they slowly start waking up other gods until they start 
kind of not shoehorning them but almost making the entire marvel universe based around these characters these eternal characters that have always supposed to have been a part of the marvel universe so there is some retconning in here not only with just some of the superheroes that they're going to join some of the teams like the avengers but later on you find out that they had some dealings with mutation uh that thanos could be related to them that marvel boy there's a lot of that in here which is really interesting because at the beginning when you're reading this you really don't get the sense that any of this has any connections to the marvel universe to any of the superheroes like spider-man or thor and hell there's even a story um, i'll be doing an overview of that complete collection soon probably in a couple weeks uh where thor in a, um, about a thousand years ago, met the uh, the Eternals and fought alongside them, only to have forgotten them. And there's Markery. So some of them have been mistaken as gods. This is Cersei, who ends up joining the Avengers. Uh, Gilgamesh, who ends up <laughs> rooming with uh, Hercules, for anybody that read any of the Fred Van Lente run. But this is basically the cast that you have. And then later on, Jack Kirby, like starts i don't know if it was editorial mandate or what but he starts guest like guest starring a bunch of marvel heroes in in his own run so what does this collect well this collects the eternals this is the 1976 series it only went on two years one through 19 annual number one the 1985 series one through 12 which was a maxi series the herod factor number one the new eternals apocalypse now that came out in 2000 i think uh, Iron Man annual number six, Avengers 246 to 248, and then material from What If 23 through 30. So pretty much the first 19 issues are all Jack Kirby. It's Jack Kirby building his own world and see what I mean, like putting characters in. Um, not just the Hulk, but later on other characters appear. So that's that's pretty much the premise of the Eternals. Uh, most of the stuff in the back here by Peter Gillis is drawn by Sal Buscema. Now, Peter Gillis only does... Here, let me show you guys. This is uh, the stuff with Iron Man. Here we go. This run right here. This is a 12-issue maxi series. So, Sal Buscema draws most of the run. Peter Gillis is the writer up until the last four issues. Walter Simonson takes over. And Walter Simonson had been doing the covers of these issues. And... This omnibus had been released before. This is the expanded omnibus, if you will. So the original omnibus only collected the original 19 issues by Jack Kirby and the annual. This one adds this 1985 maxi series, the Herod Factor, the Apocalypse Now, Iron Man annual, and the Avengers and the What If stuff. So it's more complete. The only thing lacking, which it makes sense because it would have freaking been a huge omnibus, is the Thor Celestial Saga which is coming out in a complete collection and just showing casing some more of the artwork so you can tell the big jump here from the 80s to the 2000 series in just the color and this story here does retcon some of the stuff now you're going to see a lot of these characters appear in the movie of course which is one of the reasons marvel is reprinting this and i'm glad that this got a reprint or actually this is a better edition than the original omnibus uh, because we, you know, with these uh, reprints, we never know when they come. Here are the Deviants, and you've seen the Deviants appear throughout the Marvel Universe as well, and then the major players of the Eternals. There's also stuff back here from the Handbook Guide to the Marvel Universe, talking about the Celestials. So a lot of these characters you're going to see on screen. Now, they're going to look a little bit different, of course. Um, I think, I want to say, it's Athena. Athena, I think, is played by Angelina Jolie, but Ajax is played by... A lady, so it's a little bit different. I know Fa Fastos is in it. Cersei, that's my girl. And Black Knight is in it. Icarus. So I can't wait to see how they make that movie part of the MCU. Because the Eternals have always kind of stood out. Even when they try to blend in and retcon a bunch of things. To me, at least, in their corner of the universe. So back here we have some original pages. Pencil artwork and this is wonderful this is all from jack kirby's pencil art this is the arc storyline i was talking about and it's really cool to see a creator like him just take full control and let's keep looking a little bit back here and then we're going to compare the artwork in here to the artwork in the monster size book to see how much bigger that is so you also have art in here by the way from mark texeria uh joe bennett ron wilson 
uh, Luke McDonald, Al Milgram, Keith Pollard, and Paul Ryan. So it's not just Jack Kirby and Sal Buscema. So let's go back here for a second because I think this is really cool. So it states that in the Marvel Age Annual Number 1, each of the stories is interconnected by this phone call. And each of the stories is written by the creative team. So that's really cool. So this is all Peter Gillis and Sal Buscema. And then we have the introductions. These are the original introductions by Robert Greenberger and Michael Royer, who was uh, Jack Kirby's inker at one time, uh, for the original Omnibus. And then if you don't have the standard edition cover, here it is by Alex Ross. As far as the binding of the book, it is sewn binding, and this is what it looks like. This one is printed at the iMac printer in Turkey. And normally when I look at these books, I'm like, well, it doesn't really affect uh, the gutter loss in this one much because these were made from the 60s and 70s and there weren't a lot of spreads or splash pages. However, Jack the King Kirby loved to do spreads. So we're looking at page 72 right here and you can see some minimal gutter loss right there. Um, I know that he did one for just about every issue. And here you have issue one. You literally have to hold it down to see this character's, or the statue rather, its full head. So those are the kind of things you'll see in here. But for the most part, it doesn't really affect the book or the read. Let's compare it to this monster-sized book and the Eternals Omnibus. I'm used to talking about how big these books are, but it's crazy compared to the size of this monster. Now, the monster-sized book has 384 pages. So we've seen this on the channel before. We've seen these type of books like the X-Men by Jim Lee or uh, Ditko is Strange or Steranko uh, Revolutionary or the Marvels. Uh, monster size book, but this is what it looks like. This is huge and to have Jack Kirby's artwork like this I know it's not the first time because we've had the behold Galactus book, but I don't own that one So this is the first time I've seen Jack Kirby Art like this. This is so freaking awesome It it took me a long time to appreciate Kirby. I know it's blasphemous. I talk about it on my channel how much I hated the type this type of artwork when I was a kid, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s. And it's like, I was like, Jack Kirby, what are you old people talking about? But the insanity of this page, not, not just the page itself, but just every corner is filled with art. It's like he's always lived his life with, you know, your your working life with one panel. You take one panel at a time and you fill it up with your story. That's That was his motto. I mean, and it shows, and I didn't appreciate that until he was long gone. You know, he passed away when, 1995, I think. I I had a chance to meet him. I never, uh, I had a chance, actually I had two chances to meet him at conventions. Never said anything to him, because he wasn't my artist. Now I wish I could go back in time and just tell him how much he changed comics. How dynamic he made it. How well it flowed. Live and learn. Um, but we're going to do a really quick comparison since I've talked uh, about these stories already. But th this monster size, like I mentioned, has 384 pages and only collects issues 1 through 19 and annual number 1. And I say only, but that was really what the original Omnibus collected. It does not collect the letter pages, unlike the Omnibus. And we'll look at the back for extras. But what I want to do quick is a quick comparison in size. So here you go. Imagine this is an Omnibus, your biggest books that you have on your shelves. And along comes this monster size book. Just to kind of give you an idea of how big these books are. That's amazing to have, especially if you're a fan of this art. Okay, we'll do just a couple more pages. Um, as far as the paper quality on the Monster Size book, it is really thick, glossy paper. And of course, this feels a lot thinner compared to this. But here is what the art looks like. The next page should be a splash page if I remember this story. It's from issue 11. And let's see. Yeah, there we go. And here it is compared to the Omnibus. Of course, well, let's do page by page. That's what it looks like. And right there. Now, we've talked about the paper quality, but let's talk about the binding. 
So before I talk about the binding, I did want to come to the back and look at the extras because normally they don't really put extras back here except maybe a cover or two. But it looks like we have some house ads. We have original character designs of Icarus, original unused artwork here from Jack Kirby. This looks like just editorial stuff from uh, different issues, not letter pages. And then you even get the standard edition cover to the Eternals omnibus. So that's really cool. Now... It is sewn binding and <laughs> not much of an eye, but honestly, as heavy as this book is, let me see. So looking at issue 10 to kind of give you an idea of what the spreads look like inside the book, we're looking at page 168 and 169 and there's really, I mean, you can see the sewn binding in some of the, in between the pages here. So there's really no gutter laws for a huge book like this. Yeah. I mean, you really don't expect one, um, but that's it. This is the Eternals overview and advance overview of monster size. But that, as they say, is that now you can purchase both books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books, with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of each of these books. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking either one of these up. If you're a fan of these monster-sized books or they're just too big, uh, and where do you store them? Just out of curiosity for those that have them. And that was it. This was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Uh, and speaking of live, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Old Reader, New Reader comes back with Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman, Omnibus Volume 1. Volume 2 we'll be doing next Tuesday. And again, that is live, where we review the story of Fantastic Four by Hickman. And don't forget to hit that like button. I've already said that. So more importantly, please, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe. Much love to all of you.